Hey, I'm Tommy Coletti. I own the Music Zoo in New York. I'm here with Grover Jackson. We want to talk to him a little bit here. It's uh, January 16th at the NAMM Show 2010, uh, the Randy thing, which always interested me. And, and that was kind of like a surprise. If I remember correctly, you said that he showed up, like, was it Christmas Eve Christmas or something like that? Well, it was, uh, the I think, the 23rd. It was uh, the day before Christmas Eve. Er uh, Randy had just come home. Um, Blizzard wa was recorded and released in Europe, but had not been released in the U.S. Okay. So. Uh, to put it in kind of context, I mean, Randy was a guy who'd played in a band around L.A. and hadn't gotten a record deal, and then this guy that used to sing with Black Sabbath um, uh, had hired him, and they'd gone off to England, and, and, you know, Ozzy was just a guy that used to be in Black Sabbath. He wasn't Ozzy, and Randy was just a guy, that <coughs> a local guitar player that had gotten a job with this guy. And uh, Randy had come home for Christmas with his mom. He called, and, and I knew who he was because of the local scene. And and uh, he called up and said, "Hey, uh, I need to get a guitar made." And everybody was already gone for the Christmas holidays. We'd taken the week off. And uh, I said, "Okay, come on out." And so that was like on the 22nd. He came out on the 23rd, and we sat there from noon till midnight, and just yacked for 12 hours. It was a 12 hour yak fest about everything, music and records and guitar playing and all kinds of things. And Randy was was just that kind of guy that he was so easy to talk to and such a nice guy. So, I mean, a lot of times people want to ask me about Randy playing this or guitar or that, and I, and I just never think of him in those terms. I always think of him as this really genuinely nice guy um, that played guitar. By the right. way, right. By the and way, he, and he came to you with the sketch, sort of. He, he had, had a little idea. scratch of Bill's piece of paper with like a like a four or five line scratch drawing of just the body, and in the course of the conversation, I, I said, "Well, how about if we put this head on it?" And he says, "That's good." And what kind of inlays and oh, what pickups and blah 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 blah. We went through the whole dog and pony show and kind of sketched it out, and the guitar was born that day. Now that's the original white one, which we made, and he played. And he came back later and he said, you know, people keep coming up to me at shows asking me if it's a flying V, a Gibson flying V that's been cut up or modified. He says, so I want to make another one, but I want to make it more shark fin like. I said, okay, and we prepared some samples and, uh, and he and uh, Kevin Dubrow came out and we spent, I don't know, two or three hours uh, with these blanks, they were necks with body blanks glued to them, and we would sketch and, and erase and, and sketch and erase, and, and, and finally he said, yeah, that's it, that's what I want. I said, okay, well, let me just take it to the bandsaw and kind of hack it out so we can, you know, you can hold it and feel what it's going to feel like. And he says, oh, I can't watch that. <laughs> It's, it's funny, a, a, a sort of a sideline is that I've known guitar players over my career that some guys that are like auto guys where they want to know about every little nuance of how it's made and everything. And then there's other guys who are strict musicians and they don't want to know nothing. They just want to pick the instrument up and play it. And Randy was one of those guys. He was not a mechanic. He was a player. So he says, I can't watch this. And so I went over to the band. He went in the office. He and Kevin went in the office. And I went over and hacked it out on the band, saw and took it in. He says, yeah, that's it. And that's how the, f the first one, the black one, was made. That's incredible. Yeah. And then he took it on tour and, yeah. you know. Un unfortunately, well, it, uh, I, that was when they were home for the break before the ill-fated tour. And then we, we delivered that guitar to him at the dress rehearsals, which were held between Christmas and New Year's at um, Francis Ford Coppola's movie studio. He had a studio at the time called Zoetrope Studios. Right. And uh, the dress rehearsals for the tour were done there. And I think the first gig was, was New Year's Eve in San Francisco. That was the first night he ever played the guitar. And then, obviously, not long after that, he passed away. So he, he only had the guitar for a little less than three months.